ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for listening. Thank you for downloading. And thank you for subscribing to the latest edition of the 12 Kyle podcast. I am your boy, 12 Kyle, back in the building again. And we're doing something special in this episode. Uh, well, they're all special, but um, <laughs> we're doing something different. Um, if, you're, if you've been outside, and you remember something that was very popular or became very popular during the uh, pandemic uh, when we were all on uh, shutdown and lockdown uh, was the Versus series. Now, if you were hiding under a rock or you weren't familiar, uh, the Versus series was a thing where you took one artist and pit them against another artist. And these two artists basically um, played, uh, sometimes sung or DJ'd their um, catalogs. And the fans kind of went back and forth and decided, based on the songs that were played, who was the quote-unquote winner. Uh, and that process uh, got me to thinking about having a versus, uh, not so much as between two artists, but about artists and, a, and some of their particular albums. And the more I thought about it, I was like, hey, We've got quite a few artists who have great albums. Uh, some would deem classic albums. And um, so it got me to thinking about maybe possibly having a situation where you take two albums from a particular artist and pit those two albums together. And then you come up with a criteria, which is key, because a lot of times when we have conversations about music, uh, there is no criteria. So, you know, if you say, well, who's the best MC of all time, you know, somebody the, the, the natural response should be, well, what's the criteria? What is it based off of? Um, but in this versus that you're about to hear, uh, we actually have a criteria. Uh, we actually have a, a scoring system. And um, I'm looking forward to doing this. Uh, we are going to be talking about the debut and the sophomore albums from one Mary Jane Blige. Uh, now, if you've been following the podcast, you know that I've done uh, an album review for both albums, uh, but it's a little different this time. This time it's going to be a versus. And as you can see from the marquee, or if you're watching on YouTube, thank you for watching. Uh, you see that I got my homegirl back in the building. Hello. Britt is back again. Britt, what's good? Not much. Tired of Mary J, like I said. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, Not I'm sure you've heard, to do this, though. <laughs> right. I, I'm sure you've heard enough of Mary J leading up to this. Um, Probably what, getting for that, too, but yeah. What's that? You hate her. I don't hate her. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it's, it's been interesting. Um, we, um, You had reached out and we were talking, and you was like, well, hey, what do you got coming up? And I was like, well, hey, I, I'm about to kick off this Versus series. Uh, and then you said, you asked a little bit more about it. What, what was your thoughts when I sent you what we were going to talk about? I was excited because okay. I could do this all day. Like, I probably should have chose that career path. <laughs> and, uh, well, it's funny. Doing podcasts, like being on Baylor's and everything. I used to want to be a radio jockey when I was really. Young. Yeah, I loved LA radio. That's all I did was listen to it. Big boy in the morning, all that. And so I just never went that way. Don't know why, just didn't. And then podcasting got popular and then Baylor had his and yeah. So I'm excited, but then I love music. So when you came with this one, I was like, holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> Versus, I had like lived and breathed every single one Mm -hmm. Every time they did one, whatever, from the very beginning. I don't know if you mm -hmm. actually caught Timberland and uh, Swiss yep. Beats doing their. Yep. Yeah. Right. Yep. Yep. I stayed up till they were done. <laughs> really? Because they were late. If I remember right. Yep. They were yep. late. Yep. late. And um, yeah. So I love stuff like this. So I Before we even get into it, do you remember? Was there. A, I guess I guess I'll put you on the spot. <clears throat> what was your. If you had to pick one versus. Uh, that you saw, which, which was your favorite versus? That is hard because there is a top three. Okay. Um, I'll, I'll let you slide. Give me a top three. <laughs> no particular order. Okay. 
one that always stood out was Erica Badu and Jill Scott. Mm, yes. That's a good one. Um, so this was a little different. I'm probably forgetting some of them, honestly. Mm -hmm. It was so many and so long. But did you watch the one with Neo and um, what's his name? The other producer. Um, he did like Mariah Carey songs, Chris Brown. Why well, can't I remember? I didn't see that one. I know who you're talking about. I didn't see that was, is that an obvious something? Okay. That was amazing. Only really? because they had, it was like hit for hit. And it was cool because it was like different artists. And then you got to re like see, oh, he did that song. I didn't know he wrote that song. And it was just back to back, like Mariah Carey. And then Neo's bringing out his own stuff. Okay. And that one was pretty cool. But I think my favorite, favorite was Snoop and DMX. Mm. The vibe was just, it was so like organic. And to watch them rapping each other's songs and really getting yeah. into it, like that, I loved watching. I think that was my favorite. I think, um, wow, if I had to pick, it's hard to pick. Like you said, it's hard to pick one. Um, I really enjoyed Jill Scott and, and Erica Badu. That was, I was there for that one because I love both of those ladies yeah. and both of their catalogs. Um, what was the other one that I loved? Um, Red and Meth. That was dope. Yeah. That was dope. Yep. I love Red and Meth. Um, I, I, I even loved, I loved, De it, it was a little discombobulated, but I loved D'Angelo. Um, that I was more of a performance. That yeah, that was more of a performance. Um, that was dope because, I mean, D'Angelo don't come outside for nobody. So, no. <laughs> uh, they, so just to have D'Angelo on stage was <laughs> something something else. Um, KRS One and Big Daddy Kane. Oh, yeah. Listen, I saw was, both of them live. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, I probably say my favorite was much like you, Snoop and DMX. Obviously now because you know DMX is no longer with us, but because they were there, and and you know it's a little different too because as you know fears and people kind of opened up a little bit, the pandemic changed and stuff. So. <laughs> You know, Snoop and DMX were able to be in the same place. Right. We didn't get a versus with right. Timbaland and Swiss Beats in the same place, or mm -hmm. you know, um, Erica Badu and Joe Scott in the same place, or Teddy Riley and Babyface in the same place. Which, nah, that would would have that would have been cool because I right. love both of them. If Teddy right. hadn't been trying to, he was doing too much production. <laughs> he was doing too much. He was doing too much. Um, so yeah, yeah those are those are probably my favorite. Was there one that? Because I, I missed some that, I mean, if, if I wasn't interested, I just wasn't tuning yeah. in. Um, what was the worst one for you? Of the ones I tuned in, who what, was it? Uh, oh, my God. Who did Rick Ross go against? Oh, Rick Ross had a versus? I didn't it even was, see that one. It was, I like Rick Ross, but it was mm -hmm. like Rick Ross, and I think it was, uh, See, this is where I'm going to sound old. I can never remember. <laughs> or um, it's not two chains. What's his name? Ty Dolla Sign. Oh, wow. Damn. I, I think it was that. that. Okay. Okay. I but that the reason too. why that one was bad, having strippers or dancers come out. And okay. okay. Rick, Ross getting, <laughs> Rick Ross took off his shirt. He's getting his back rub. Or, or like, y'all doing too much. Like, mm -hmm. it's like you're trying to, you're doing the verses not for the right reason. Right, and I'm not like a huge Rick Ross, but I was like, oh, Rick Ross, that's cool. Right, could have done without that one. Um, and I feel that what was it, one twelve and Jagged Edge, that would have been cool if mm -hmm. they hadn't had crappy service. I don't know if it was just me yeah. and the other people, yeah. but like no. their connection was awful. There was no flow to it. It just it, that could have been something, and it wasn't. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I remember that one. That that was. That was disappointing because, like you said, they weren't in a, they were in a position where they could be in the same place, and you know people had fears of COVID, so they weren't mm -hmm. doing these in the same place. And and you're right, the connection was bad. Um, what was the worst that I actually saw? Um, oh, um, it was Bone Thugs and was it Three Six Mafia? 
I think that's what it was. I, I turned that one off. <laughs> yeah, I turned it off too. I turned it off too. Like before the fight actually happened, I think I turned yeah. it off. I was like, yeah. I literally had it on for like five minutes. I was like, nah, I'm gonna skip this one. I'm gonna and skip I, this one out. I like a couple three six mafia songs, mm -hmm. like phone thugs. I like more than them. Mm -hmm. But when all that extra stuff started happening, I was like, next, I don't want to see this. Like yeah. And uh, then by that time, too, people started being outside. So, you know, yeah. asking someone to be in the house and sit and watch this on a computer or a phone or a tablet or a TV right. for three hours, that's asking a lot. Yeah. And I was still cool. Do I forgot. Back it up. I got to I'm going to take out Neo. OK. Earth, Wind and Fire and Isley Brothers. I forgot. How did I forget about that one? <laughs> I just and you know, what, you just made me think about one, too. Um uh the locks and dips yes oh uh, uh, should i say jada kiss versus right, <laughs> right. man versus everybody else because because jada kiss killed it he could have done that by himself easily mm -hmm. easily I, I mean like after that after that um versus if you weren't a fan of jada kiss i don't know what was wrong yeah. with you because he, he he tore it down yeah um but How yeah get her that's <laughs> Yeah, yeah that, that was a great one. That one, that was. was one for the ages. That was one for the ages. Um, Didn't, I, oh my God, SWB and Escape. Well, I forgot about that one. Just to watch, the, like, well, here's the thing. I don't know. I'm not, I'm, I'm not a fan of, I'm not a fan of Escape. I love SWB. Oh yeah, so, here. Escape, nah. But I um, feel that having those two groups, mm -hmm. because when you think of like R&B, like 90s mm -hmm. groups, they're the top I would say top what three? Yeah, <laughs> the yeah, top that's, that's three. Fair. They're up there. That's fair. Um, but I don't know if you know, like before, one of them witnessed on SWV. I think it was Coco. She witnessed like somebody get shot and killed, like right before. So oh, wow. she was all like mentally all over the place. She didn't get herself together. If you could ever go back and watch it, she okay. didn't get herself together until like mid show. Oh wow! Yeah. And because I was like, okay, it's kind of weird. Like, there's just some weird vibe, and then that was why. Mm -hmm. But I forgot about them. Uh, but if you we could pick, huh? I said we saw some good ones though. We did. We really did. But if you could pick two people you didn't get to see go up there, um, who would you have wanted to see? Who didn't? Well, you know what was weird is that it seems like everybody did a versus. <laughs> Um, I have two people I wish did, and I would have loved to. I mean, it, it wouldn't have been pot. Well, it was possible, but it, I knew it wasn't going to happen. Um, I would have loved to have seen Outcast versus a Tribe Called Quest. Mm, that would have been a good one. That would have been it for me. Yeah, Cast, Cast and Tribe. That would have been it for me. I got on my, my Cast shirt today, so nice. um, I got yeah. on Mary J. In case you didn't I see, see. I see. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, what about you? Buster Rhymes and Missy Elliott. Mm, did Buster even have a versus? No. Okay. Oh, wow. And I put them, I actually, it could have been Luda and Missy or Buster and Missy, either one, because I feel they're all kind of like that out mm -hmm. there, but, you know, commercial enough. And I would have liked to have seen either Buster or Luda. I know Luda did Manelli, and that one, the service was garbage too. Yeah, uh, but either of them against Missy, I would have liked to have seen. Okay, so before we get off the verses, one more question. Um, at the time of this recording, there is going to be, from what I understand, another versus coming. Um, Jermaine Dupri versus Puff. I guess they'll be playing. Playing, you know, there's a, their discographies, the catalogs, and I want to say it's like the Fourth of July. I think. Or somewhere oh, around there, and I took are, that day off. So, <laughs> are you are you sitting and watching, and listening to Jermaine Dupri versus Puff? I am. Okay. Because if you know those two, and you know the tracks that they have touched, if they're gonna do it like how uh, Swiss and Timbaland did, and Neo and can't remember that man's name. <laughs> and Teddy and Babyface, like, yeah, they'll do some of their own, but really, mm -hmm. they've got so many yeah, different so many. Like, people. I'm watching that because I guarantee you, I'm going to be like, I had no idea he did that one. I had no right. idea he did that one. So I'm watching that. Yeah, I think, um, 
I don't think that I don't I don't think I couldn't see me not watching it. Yeah. Um, you know, because not like a game will be on or something like that. Um, and then you know, part of the part of the enticement of watching the verses back then was, you know, people chiming in and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Um, and and literally, I mean, when you talk about the hits, uh, Puff and Jermaine Dupri really could go on all night. They got more yeah. than, than hits. Mm-hmm. So, um, as for us and our verses here. Uh, what we're going to get into is, like I said, we, we're going to talk about two albums. Um, a lot of people, uh, not just Brit and I, but a lot of people consider these albums to be classic. Now, the word classic is, you know, it's, it's a word that's used by fans. We've talked about it on this podcast before. Um, it's something that other fans use to talk, and it's a term that they use for creating um, a debate, if you will. But you're not really putting value on a particular album. Um, whether something whether something is or isn't a classic, or whether it's good or it's not, um, sometimes has to do with people's favorites. I mean, let's just be real. Uh, it's a way for people to talk about albums um, that everybody loves, and it also shows you know people's connection to the music. But the flip side of it on this episode, what we're going to do is, like I said, we're going to look at the debut album and the sophomore album. From Mary J. Blige, what's the 411 versus my life? We'll we'll examine both albums and we're gonna judge both albums. Uh, but as I mentioned at the top, we're gonna have a criteria. We'll examine them and we're gonna score them on a score from one to five. The criteria will be discussed by the two of us uh on this episode, and I'll and I'll get into it in just a second. And basically, what we're gonna do is we're gonna try to numerically when it's all said and done total it and make a definitive determination as to which album is better now here's the criteria it's five things coherence impact replayability lyrics and production that's the five criteria and we're going to total it from you're going to score from one to five with five being the highest for each one um so let's get started right there um coherence now i'm going to give you guys a brief synopsis of what we deem coherence to be uh coherence is often a theme in the, in in this particular album um something that the artist is going through uh occasionally it produces a concept album uh but you know doesn't necessarily have to be the rule um sometimes the emotion of an album and the emotion of life can be so strong that the albums are recorded in a particular space and that's just like where the artist's head is at. Uh, good albums can conjure emotion um, in a listener f- just from a few songs. Great albums do it consistently. So coherence. When we're talking about coherence for what's the 411, what is the number that you're going to give coherence for what's the 411 and why? And this is one through five? Mm-hmm. With five being the highest. Um, oh my god! And see, and I'm an overthinker, so I'm going back and forth <laughs> myself. I was doing that when I was listening. Um, I got the little description written in front of me that you sent me. Mm-hmm. For that, I'm gonna give it. Oh my gosh. Um, because when you talk about like conjuring emotion and everything, I think I'm going to give that. Mm, can I do halves? <laughs> yeah, this, this, this is your need a half on that one. OK, OK, for, OK. For, um, that first one. Coherence. OK. Yeah. Um, and the reason why is because not that she didn't have feeling, but if we're comparing the two. <clears throat> I have there's more feeling in that right. that second one than this one. And a lot of times with somebody's first album, unless you're Prince and do all of it by yourself, you've got other people like this track is good for you. Not saying she didn't write any of them, but this track, you need to do this one on your first one. This one, it's not really who you are mm-hmm. completely. Yes, some of that is her, but like the authentic, the pureness of whatever it is that's in your heart. Mm, that's your heart, but then you've got some somebody else's ingredients thrown in there as well. Right. right. <clears throat> that's why. 
Um, as far as coherence for me, I'm going to give it a four. Um, I think it's, I think it's, um, <clears throat> it's not an emotional album, but I think the album gives off emotions of joy and fun and happiness, um, particularly in her upbeat tracks. Uh, you know, songs like Reminisce, You Remind Me. Love. Um, <clears throat> yeah, Real Love. In real Love, I mean, yeah, you're searching for a real love, but like it's in a positive way. It's not right, like, oh, I'm right. alone and, <laughs> you know. And at and that, and that, that particular time, like, I just remember in being outside, a song like Real Love was like, that was like the young lady's, mm -hmm. you know, anthem. You know what I'm saying? Like, that was a joint. And <clears throat> I think that song and, and the subsequent songs on this particular album, and then obviously My Life, helped propel Mary J. Blige to a certain stratosphere particularly with women who were around my age mm -hmm. um, to a level that we hadn't seen in someone who was basically our age and our contemporary. Um, so you said three and a half. Let me write these down. So three and a half and I had four. All right. So my life coherence, what you got for my life? I'm going to give that a four. Okay. Um, I don't know if you listened to that album on Apple music but there's commentary there's the album oh, is not okay. separate it's like the commentary album so you listen to the track or actually no you get the commentary first and then you hear the track you get the comment and it's her talking about each track and so i had to put all of them in a folder and then i went back and listened to the ones with the commentary and without because she's giving you the background why this song this this and this but i wanted to hear how it flowed all together too <laughs> like, okay okay but um I'll, I'll give it a four because with the commentary, you you get the backstory and you hear um, all of what she's gone through. Mm -hmm. And then I told you I, I watched Unsung, so I know some of the background stuff on both of these albums. But right. um, she had gone through a lot at this point, and I feel like you just hear it more in her voice um, while she's singing. Even the lyrics itself, but that's another category um but just you can hear it in her voice uh the pain and the hurt and the things she's gone through so i'm giving that a little bit more not quite a five for me but it would be a four yeah i um <clears throat> i i gotta give that a five i think there's so much emotion well one i listened to it on spotify mm -hmm. I, I didn't i didn't know apple had that i don't have apple music but i i didn't know they had that feature but that's dope yeah um yeah i gave it a five because like that's one of the things to me that jumps out is just the emotion of whatever it was that she was feeling on those particular days that she wrote or sang on this album and it was a it, it, it it's something that you can't ignore like i think it's a a, a piece where you know if somebody just if if, if you'd never heard my life before and you sat a 15-year-old young man or young lady down and, and had them listen to it, they'd, they'd understand it. But if you played it for a 20, 25 or 26-year-old, they'd feel it. Right. So I think life lessons would have you know, gotten them to that point where they would feel it. So mm -hmm. I, think, I think that album brings out a lot of emotions. Um, I think it's very coherent all the way through. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm giving that a five. Um, so then the next category is impact. Now impact, people talk about impact a lot, Britt. Impact is something that's very hard to measure. One, because like, and I'll give you an example. Like if I say somebody like Tupac, Tupac meant a lot to people like us who were, you know, he had an impact on people like us who were alive when he was alive mm -hmm. or we were around when we're still alive but when we were around <laughs> when he was al when yeah. he was alive as opposed to if you're talking to someone who you know is 25 who wasn't around when he was alive or maybe they were baby when he was alive mm -hmm. and they didn't really and let's say they study Tupac and they understand his music and they mm -hmm. become a huge fan or whatever but you weren't there to see those raw emotions and things come out in his music Mm -hmm. 
So impact is something I think is very hard to quantify. I don't get into it with people when they start talking about impact. But we define impact as if an album doesn't necessarily receive immediate critical acclaim, the repercussions and influence of the album can be measured across time. So with that being said, Britt, what do you have for impact for what's the 411? Look, I gotta go back to the track list real quick. <laughs> mm-hmm. Go ahead. Um, I'll be honest. I didn't. I heard Mary J. Blige's songs when I was younger. Mm-hmm. I didn't actually listen to albums because my family just didn't listen to Mary J. like that. Mm-hmm. I didn't listen to albums till I was like high school or later. Mm-hmm. So. Impact for what's the four one one? I'm honestly gonna go with the four. I think okay. it's set a lot for R and B women, even in the '90s, and then going forward. Um, oh, see, and I'll get I'll get into the other technical stuff later. <laughs> but <laughs> um, yeah, like you said earlier about women or with females, whatever, listening to her and listening to those upbeat songs. It just, it does something. I don't know. The impact, like you said, that's a hard one to really, it could go any direction. Right. <laughs> it really, I feel impact is more of a personal thing Thanks. when it comes to music, unless she was, you know, Black Panthers and you know, all <laughs> really a personal preference, I guess, right. when it comes to impact. No, I agree. Um, that it is it's, it's always hard to quantify um, because it is something personal. Because you know, even going back to using Tupac as an example, the impact that he had on me might not be the same impact he had on Baylor, and mm-hmm. the impact he had on Baylor may not be the same impact he has on you. Um, but as far as this album, <clears throat> I think this album was very impactful, particularly. Not so much as for me, but particularly for because I was in college when this album came out, and I just know how every woman at South Carolina State University revered this album because, like, you couldn't go anywhere and not hear it. You know, if you were riding in the car, somebody was playing it. If you was in the boys' dorms, you was hearing it. If you was in the girls' dorms, you were hearing it. So, um, and Mary J. Blige quickly became like some t- some somewhat of a um shero for young ladies yeah. at our you know collegiate level age people so especially gonna... the fact that it she was um a New York woman in the hood. Yes. yes. And yeah she wasn't she wasn't like polished up like Whitney. Mm-mm. She didn't come from you know right a famous family like Janet. Um she was your runaway girl. Yeah. Simply put. And then like when you saw the video for real love, she's got baseball cap. She's in mm-hmm. jerseys. Her dancers in jerseys, they're in boots. Yep. She looks like a B girl. Yeah. So I, I would say impact. I'm giving this a four and a half. It, it, I think mm-hmm. that was a long lasting thing for, um, for Mary J. Blige. And I think that was the four one one album really kind of catapulted her to she wrote status. Um, now, conversely, uh, <laughs> impact my life. Talk to me about that one. I think I'm going to just stick with the four. Um, almost the same. Re- like she, how far apart were these? I don't even remember. 94 and 94, 92. Years. Yeah. Um, I mean, she was still the around the way girl, but I won't say she was polished, but she was more feminine, I guess. Mm. Like that part showed more, I'll say, with the second album. And that was, once again, the feeling and the emotion and the heartbreak in that album. Yeah, you had songs and stuff that like others did that brought up, but like to have a whole album 
that's really about the hurt that you've gone through and that was relatable, I'm going to give it a four. But yeah, I, I feel it was more impactful on that painful side. Okay. Um, I got to give it a five. I got to give it a five because if you were outside at the time, if you had lived, if you had had your little heart broken once or twice, <laughs> um, <laughs> you, you really felt this album. Um, and I think where What's the 411 is a, an incredibly dope album, my life catapulted her, like I said, to Shiro status because I think there are a lot of people, both men and women at the time, who were going through what she was going through. Mm -hmm. And, you know, keep in mind that she has a very, very public relationship that's on display with KC from uh, Jodeci. Mm -hmm. And then they break up. I mean, like, mm -hmm. KC was on the first album, you know, a duet. Yep. They have a duet on the first album. And, you know... It, it's kind of hard to to put this into words, but like, just imagine you're a su you're this budding star, and then your label mate, boyfriend, you know, all of these rumors are swirling about him cheating on you and hitting you and all kind of stuff like that, and you're dealing with all of this stuff. And but see, back in '94, there was no Twitter, there was no right. social media, there was no so, social media. <laughs> so you know, all the stuff we heard was just hit. I mean, some of the stuff that I heard about their relationship. I don't know if it's true to this day because it was just that's just what was said. So it's you either believe it or you don't. But she was able to take all of that pain, suffering, and joy because there's joy in this album, and she put it all into you know in, into this album, and she put her heart and soul into this album. And it's I think it's 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 I think it's poetic, but also tragic to some degree because I think this is her best work. And it's the worst time in her life. But that's like, exactly where you get the best poetry, the best songs, everything is. So tough, yeah. Though. Yeah. That's so tough for an <laughs> artist. Cause it's like, I mean, think about it. If you go to a Mary J Blige concert, you want to hear my life. Yeah. She's literally singing about like mm -hmm. the darkest time in her life. I mean, like, mm -hmm. I don't know if I guess because of my spirit and who I am as a person, how upbeat I am. I don't know if I'd be one. If, if I had the saddest day of my life, I don't think I want to be singing about it for me. And not in front of everybody, no. Right. <laughs> yeah. Maybe in, the, maybe in the shower, maybe in the yeah. backyard, but not. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, I, I impact, I gotta give it a five. This I think this this took her from that hood girl, that round away girl, that B girl to I think this album took her to what would be the next step, which would be superstar status to me. Mm -hmm. And again, I think there's there's a certain level of relatability wherein I don't know if necessarily fans could, or, or I don't want to say fans. I'm going to make it clear. Young black women. I don't think young black women at this point in her second album, if I had to compare her to Janet or to Whitney or to Aretha or whomever else that was out, I don't think young black women related to them the way that they related to her at this particular time because she made it seem and when you listen to her particularly like in interviews and stuff like that she looked and sounded just like the girl next door right and i don't think you know you, you didn't get that from janet you didn't get that from whitney and and they're not in any type of competition but i think the impact of this album kind of took her there yeah she was just different than all the other women who were popular right at that time right right mm -hmm. so yeah I, I gotta um let me write this down you Okay, so impact you gave. What you give my life again? You gave. We both it? had a four. Four. Okay, so you got a four, and okay, and I gave it a five. All right. So then we go to replayability. Replayability. Um, <clears throat> replayability. That's when you basically you can playing play this album again. Through. Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> do they have enough quality songs to make subsequent visits back to the album worthwhile? Um, from your personal experience, it should you should have at least six, a minimum of six mm -hmm. dope songs for replayability. Uh, how are you scoring replayability for what's the 411? That's a five for me. Okay. I that one through, not skip a song, 
and I can listen to that one over and over again. Hands down, it, like it's, it's the upbeat songs. They're catchy, mm-hmm. they get you. And yeah, she's got, you know, some slower and like, eh, you know, I'm feeling like this today kind of songs. But I can, that one, I'm not skipping one song on there. So that's a five for me. Okay. I will agree. However, I got to give it four and a half. And the only reason why I knock it down a peg is because of I'm going down. I'm going down was on the Wait and Exhale soundtrack. Yeah. And then they put it on um what's the four one one? No, they didn't. I'm going down is on my life. I, you know what? My bad. <laughs> I got I got them mixed up. Okay, so replayability, that gets a five. You're you're right. You're right. That is one of my reasons why. (laughs) That's one of my reasons why the next one gets a four. (laughs) Okay, so that's why I'm going to give that four and a half. Mm -hmm. Because I skipped that song. Mm -hmm. I skipped that song. Okay, so replayability. Yeah. On. Yeah. (laughs) When you like certain songs by the original artists, and because here's the thing too, on the first on the first album. She's got a sweet thing. That was Shaka Khan and Ruth. Yep. Mm-hmm. But for me, she did all right on that one. Like, not saying she did bad on I'm Going Down, mm-hmm. but. Mm, mm. And wait, you know what it was? That's you know not what it was for me. Waiting to Exhale. Yeah, you know what it was for me? I, I think <laughs> it was on Waiting to Exhale soundtrack, and the song was huge. But by the time it got to my life, we were tired of it. Like I, like I didn't need to hear it. Exhale soundtrack, though. I just thought about that. That's not you gonna cry. Okay, so <laughs> wait a minute. Okay, so now I'm now confused. Okay, so the second album still gets a four for me. I have other songs that are making it that way. What, but what was on that? What was on that soundtrack? Not gonna cry. I'm going down. Was on. Hold up. Nah, I no, it. I'm going down. Was on her album. That's not. I could have sworn that was on, oh, and I could be wrong. I, I think she only be... had not gonna cry. Hold on. And this is this this is a great part of do, about doing live live uh, episodes. Um. Yeah, it's not gonna cry. She's not. Okay, so I'm going down. Cause yeah, waiting to exhale was in '95. Well, what was I, I'm, I'm going down? I had to be on somebody's soundtrack. I got tired of that song. I just know I got tired of it. I thought it was on. They a, played it out. That, forgive that they did. But, forgive me if I'm wrong, but I, I got tired of that song. No, I I agree, but I like Rolls Royce mm-hmm. better than that. Um, I don't know why it's not that Mary J can't sing, but mm-hmm. I don't care for her version all that much compared to Rolls Royce. Mm-hmm. Um, and then hold on, I had the track list posted up here because there's something else on that, so I can include that in this um category. The problem I have with Mary J's albums because Puffy mm-hmm. did work on both mm-hmm. sampling that's that's just gonna happen, right? But that's a lot of what Puffy does, and I feel that she had more songs that weren't hers. Mm-hmm than other stuff like in in the commentary album she talks about how like she just loved this track and blah blah and that's cool you can sing on it but a lot of those especially in the 90s they weren't overplayed overused by then so the sampling when i listen to it now i'm really tired of it but then i just like the originals better so um she had mary jane Mm mm-hmm Love That's Mary all night Jane. long by the Mary Jane girls. Of course, of course. And then you have there's another one she did. Okay, so my life is actually a sample. I'll let that slide because that's like one of the best songs on the album, but that's a sample. And then I'm going down is not like yeah. there's just so <laughs> many samples, and it's one thing if you're sampling the instruments, but when you're sampling mm-hmm. and then you're using words or, or just doing a whole remake, yeah, mm-hmm. I'll pass. I'll pass. Okay. Like, okay. So that's where it gets a point knocked off for me. It's still a good album, mm-hmm. but I can also skip some songs on there that I'm just like, eh, the, the slower ones. But gotcha, gotcha. Okay, yeah. okay. 
Yeah, I apologize for being wrong. I, I thought that it was, I thought that I'm going to, I could have sworn I'm going down was on somebody's soundtrack. It might not have been, but uh, I got tired of it really, really quick. So um, by the time it got to the album, I was like, so that's, that's, that's the only skip for me on that album. Um, Repel playability, again, I'm going four and a half. Um, but, I, and like I told you before we came on, like I'm at the point and been at the point for for years now where um, I never listen to these albums apart. Mm-hmm. I always listen to them back to back. I if I start with my life, I go to um, I go to the first album. If I start with the first album, I go back to my life. It's just that's just how it is. Um, I think they're just together like that. Um, and last but not least, uh, we gotta go with the lyrics now. You gotta- when you talk about, huh? You got two more. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm, yeah, you're right. I'm at four. <laughs> lyrics. Yes. Um, when you talk about lyrics, how does the artist sound with their words? Do the words ring in your ear? Do the words create memories? So for what's the 411, what do you have for lyrics? Um, seeing this... With scoring on this, this is personal experience. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. See, but what's that? My life has more song. I don't know. This is hard <laughs> because I can relate to both of them mm-hmm. a lot. Um, let me see what's on this one. Reminisce, uh, real mm. love. Shit. Mm. <laughs> You got Remindus, Real Love, You Remind Me, Sweet Thing, Love No Limit, I Don't Want... Okay, look, this is getting a five already. Right. Um, I Don't Want to Do Anything, Slow Down, My Love, Changes I've Been Going Through. I, that's getting a five. Mm. I like Each song... Shoot, I think that's because it's where I am right now. <laughs> <laughs> Currently. Changes that's I've been going through. Though, because all those sheep paints the picture of how someone really is feeling in those moments. Mm -hmm. It just all flows together. It goes together. um, And you can just kind of, you can relate to it, but you can see it. Even if you're not the one going through those, you can see it or you'll think of a movie where like, oh, that's probably how they were feeling or whatever. You can, you can feel that. So I'll give that one a five. Yeah. I might go ahead and listen to this one. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, when you um when you talk about lyrics, um I saw you before. Is it deja vu, honey? Don't you know that you remind me? You remind me of a love I once knew. Is mm-hmm. it a dream or is it deja vu? Come on, man. What are we talking about? I it's a five for me. Um lyrically, I think um and without even looking at it, I'm sure Mary J. Blige didn't write most of this album, but um you know, just the the words and and what she put into the words, mm-hmm. it it definitely brings back memories. Um, you know, I'm searching for real love, something that'll set my heart free. Real love. Um, I can go on and on. Changes I've been going through. I mean, come on, man. Love no I, limit is one of my favorites. There's no need to t- come on, man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. What about uh, my life lyrics? That one's tough because if you've had your heart broken, there are very relatable. I might do a four and a half on this one. And I'm only okay. saying that because I've heard the commentary. <laughs> <laughs> so I have that information in my head too. And I mean, she wrote more songs, I feel, on this one. But um, like I said, I can skip songs on this mm-hmm. just because I'm not really feeling them that way. Um and like I'm going down, not hers, you know, Mary mm-hmm. Jane. It's just some of these songs, yes, she's got songs where you feel the pain and you, you can hear the hurt and everything. Mm-hmm. It's got some songs in it too where eh, you kind of just did that because you were feeling that. And she even said that in some of the commentary, like, oh, I love this track, blah, blah. I sang it. And one of them, uh, what, Marvin's Marvin Interlude. Okay. She said, yep. Um, she probably didn't do it justice, and this, this, and this. It was just something she was feeling at that time. Well, that's her. Own. That was, yeah, because that, that was an interlude that 
actually, you know, I, I think it, they they made it into a song at some point. Yeah. And that was her own, what she was just feeling at that time. Let me go in here because I'm feeling this. And that's cool. And that's what you do as an artist. But if I'm going to talk about lyrics and all that as a whole entire album, I'm going to mm-hmm. give it four and a half. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so four and a half for the lyrics. All right. So you did four and a half. Um, for me, my life. Um, I'm biased. I think this, I do. <laughs> this, this gets a five for me. Um, if you listen to the first verse of my life, that is, that defines this album. Period. Point blank. I think it defines this album in such a way that most fans of this album really, really relate. Um, and I think people really identify with it. Um, so yeah, I, I gotta, I gotta give it a five, um, for my life. Uh, yeah, five for my life. Um, last but not least production. How does the album sound? How is it sequenced? How does it flow? Brit, what's the four one one? What you got? So five. And I already okay. said it because I don't have to skip any songs. Mm-hmm. I'm not like it goes just how it should. And I can play it and do something else and let that thing just ride out. So it's a five. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, same for me. Uh, I, I give it a five. Um, I think it's very well produced. I think it's very well sequenced. Um, ironically, both albums have one song that I don't particularly care for because I don't particularly care for the Roy, Rose, Rice, Rose Royce song, mm-hmm. uh, the remake. Um, but Puffy was the king of the remake, so we let him slide. Yeah. Um, but um, yeah, that, that album is uh, very cohesive. Um, it flows. It flows like... And, and here's how you know, particularly when we move from having um, tapes to CDs, Here's how you know if an album is sequenced well. <laughs> if, if you can put an album on shuffle and be cool with whatever song it hits, you got yourself a good album, a mm-hmm. really good album. It's a, mm-hmm. a very well sequenced album. Now, if, it, if you hit it on shuffle, you're like, no, nah, I don't feel like this, and you go to the next song, it's probably not sequenced well. Yep. Probably not sequenced well. Mm-hmm. Uh, what about my life? Where you, where you got that? It's getting a four. Okay. Skip songs, and then sometimes... Um, there's a certain vibe that gets going and then it gets brought down by a- another song that's just a little too slower. It just doesn't feel like it fits. And that's really towards like, like I never want to live without you is one that stuck out in my head. I was like, eh, I could skip. And you skip that? I can, oh, I can. The, the two songs I like the most from my life, I will say is my life and mm-hmm. be happy. Mm, and those okay. are the most relatable ones for me too, but all these other ones, like, like I like them, but I just don't. That's where I'm biased. <laughs> <laughs> just, you like what you like, and this one is just—it's barely beating the other one for me personally. But yeah, I think it's a four. Okay. Um. Yeah. When you when you mention, and I mentioned this on episodes before, but um, um. Never want to live without you. That was the song that I heard when I met my wife in college. <laughs> um, so I'm, I'm, so I'm extremely biased. So that's like my joint. So <laughs> you know, you know, I get the thug get a little emotional when that joint come on, Brit. So you know, even to this day, you know. Um, so yeah, I, I love that. So I'm never skipping that song. Mm-hmm. Um, but no, I, I got you. I feel you on that. I feel you on that. Yeah, it, it's a. Uh, it could I think, be where I am in my life too. Like that, I'm. I'm more right now. I'm more of what's the four one one. I am my life. You had asked me like three, four years ago. It would have been my life. <laughs> but right now, no. Like, but let's just put um, let's just move. Be happy over to uh, <laughs> what's the four one one, and that's that. Shoot, everything on what's the four one one would be a five then. And be happy but, is such a cold song. It's so yeah. cold. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, I'm I'm with you on that. It's it's I think the lyrics um, and the production, the production is like I said, it it flows, mm-hmm. um, both albums, 
um, both albums, I think, flow e- immaculate. And like I said, I just I'm at the point now, Britt, where I just listen to. But I think I think you make a really good point, and I think that's something that maybe music fans don't necessarily think about a lot is that um, it depends on where you are in your life. I mean, if you're in the thugged out stage of your life, you're probably not listening to a bunch of s- slow love music. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, if you're, you're not. If you're coming out of a heartbreak or if you're coming or if you're you know in a relationship, you might be listening to something a little different, you know? Mm-hmm. So, yeah. I it's amazing it. where you are in life will change things like that. Mm-hmm. If you are a music listener, because some people just aren't, but if mm-hmm. you relate to music and put it to whatever you're going through in life, yeah. Mm-hmm. So my next question is throughout this process, because I know you and I both listen to both of these albums. Um, what is, was there something that you learned that you didn't know before either about, either about the album or about yourself or maybe what you felt about the albums um, that you didn't know before? Um, I, so I, t- I said earlier, you know, I never really listened to her like that. And I listened to songs on the mm-hmm. album, but I never sat and like listened to them all the way through. Mm-hmm. So I didn't realize how much I actually liked what's the 411. I just knew I liked songs on there. <laughs> Um, Cause I did, I spent like three, four days of that's all I listened to. Wow. It was like repeat, just have it on. Okay. I'm cooking. I'm doing whatever. Just repeat, listen, listen, listen. And um, that's when I could tell too with um, my life where I was like, all right, skip this one. Like, I don't feel like hearing this one again, <laughs> <laughs> but I learning that um, the different sounds from both albums but you can still recognize her. Like she is still a major part of this. Some people have albums and you're like, oh, that's not, that's just something somebody else wrote and that's, she's singing it. Mm-hmm. But you see where like the root of both albums is her. Um, and then even hearing the different sounds, this is not necessarily about Mary J, but she had more people working on the second one than she did the first one. Yeah. So you can yeah. kind of hear how the sound changes. You can hear which one's Puffy's on. <laughs> you can hear which one somebody else has done. I did not mm-hmm. know that Jojo actually wrote uh, one of the songs on the second album, which yep. Casey was on the first one. And then the second one, you actually had Jojo. So I was like, oh, that's interesting. Yeah, And, they, and they're broken up, uh, Casey and Jojo. I mean, excuse me. Casey and Mary J had broken up by the time that album came out. Yeah. So that was really shocking. I was like, oh, okay. Wonder how that went down. <laughs> Probably <laughs> not easy. Yeah. I just didn't realize how much I actually liked what's the 411 mm-hmm. of this. So I think the thing that I took from this was um I really, I mean, it was something I think I always I always knew, but like I really, really fell in love with both of these albums. And I was able to go back to the time period in which I did. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, this is only a two year difference, but, you know, just personally speaking, one album comes out, I'm single in college. I'm ready to mingle. <laughs> uh, I was um, running around, if you will. Mm -hmm. um the next album comes on comes out around the same time that i meet the woman that i would eventually marry um different mindset i'm settling and and i'm on the back end of my college career Mm -hmm. so i'm a little bit more settled i'm a little bit more focused and i was able to just really hone in on the music so i i i i can't necessarily say that i well I love one more than I love the other Mm -hmm. slightly. I love my life more because my life means a little bit. Because when I think about my life, I think about where I was. And then I think Mm -hmm. about my wife. I think about Sharice. Mm -hmm. But Britt, I'm going to tell you something. I tallied the numbers (laughs) for you. My life came in at 21. What's the 401 came in at (laughs) 22.5. Just barely. (laughs) Barely. For me, what's the 411? 24.5. My life, 24.5. <laughs> I 
<laughs> I promise you I didn't do that on purpose. <laughs> well, you get to pick which side you want to be. Oh, yeah, I'm picking my life. I'm picking my life. It, 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 it was the slightest of it. Mm -hmm. Slightest. But when of you it. have that that personal experience, there's personal like, you know, this connection to it. Mm -hmm. It's different. It like is. I said, if you if you had done this with me literally three four years ago, I guarantee you my life would have more just because of where I was in life. Gotcha. Now, what's the four one one? So we gonna come back and do this in three years and see where you at. <laughs> yeah. We gonna see it, where it might at. change. It might go back and forth. Who knows? Right, right, but, right, right. Um. Yeah, but I do have more of a respect for my life because I never mm -hmm. listened to it like that. I knew songs. I didn't know all of them. Um, I do have a new respect for it, though. We'll what, play it more, but. What, I know. I know you mentioned um, "Be Happy." What What did you think about her ending the album with that? Because I, I think I think that that's genius. that's a message. Yes, yes. <laughs> I think so too. Because the lyric is the the chorus is all I really want is to be happy to find a love that's mine, and be so free. Like, mm. yeah. And she's the whole album. She is talking about like okay, the pain she's gone through, everything else, and she just wants to get to this point. She's mm -hmm. been in my life where, um, you know, I cannot remember how it exactly goes, but she's basically saying, like, be at peace with yourself. Yes. And be at peace with God and everything else will fall into place. Like, I've seen all kinds of stuff, but if I just find my peace, mm -hmm. my connection with God, I'll, everything else will be all right. I, I, I thought that was so ingenious to put that as, as the good. last song on mm -hmm. the album. And then if you, I don't know if you remember the video, she was like standing on top of a mountain and you got this camera yep. the top just circling around her and everything. And, you know, she gave you so much hurt and so much pain, you know, all the way through this album and she ends it on a very upbeat note. And, she, mm -hmm. and that's the last thing that she leaves, leaves us with. Mm -hmm. And I just want to, you know, life is too short to be trying to play some games. I'm like, really? I'm like, you, you're speaking to everybody now. Yeah. You know, I, I think the lyrics in that song just really, people very relatable content very relatable content yeah. so um i'm glad you mentioned that because that made me think of that question mm -hmm. um but yeah this is the first of many verses uh this was fun Britt. this was fun mm -hmm. I, I like the I fact all day i told you i took the wrong career path <laughs> <laughs> and getting paid yeah this this is this is this was fun this was fun mm -hmm. to do because um you know we got familiar with uh two incredible albums mm -hmm. and um hopefully the listeners if you guys haven't make sure that you go and listen to both of these albums um listen to them repeatedly uh because i think you'll, you'll you'll be able to get something from it i think that's the biggest thing that you know one of the biggest takes away that we, we both can say is that we got something from these albums um before we get out of here brit tell folks where they can catch you at it if they can catch you at all right now it's just twitter <laughs> I'm going on three months of no Facebook, no Instagram, no Snapchat. There you go. And there you go. So good. What What did Mary J say? All I really want is to be happy. That's what it took. There it is. There <laughs> Getting is. off the socials, but on Twitter, it's Britty Britty eighteen B R I T T Y B R I T T Y eighteen. For sure, for sure. And you guys have been listening long enough. You know, you can catch me on uh, the Twitter streets at twelve Kyle. Uh, twelve Kyle across the board. Uh, remember, this podcast drops every. Thursday at midnight, we drop bonus episodes sometimes on Sundays as well. Um, subscribe, download, share uh, with your mom, your cousin, your uncle and them, all everybody. Um, and remember that uh, if you want to hit us up on Cash App, uh, Cash App dollar sign, T-W-E-L-V-E-K-Y-L-E. -E -E. uh, so that's going to do it for us again. Britt, thanks for coming through. Thank uh, the Versus, the first of many. Uh, this was What's the 411 versus My Life. Uh, that's going to do it for us. So for my girl, Britt, I'm your boy, 12 Kyle. We'll catch you guys next time. Next 5,000.